Hello, everybody. My name is Joseph Torellas, and I'm a professor of computer science at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Today, I'll talk about rethinking address translation in the age of containers, serverless computing, and non-volatile memory. And this is work done with some colleagues at the University of Illinois. We are entering a new era in cloud computing, the era of containers. Instead of having heavy duty um, virtual machines for each process, we now have containers. Containers are lightweight, they're fast to bring up, and they offer very high consolidation. As a result, what we are seeing in our servers and in the cloud is that there are a very large number of containers running on the same server and very frequent contact switches. This puts a lot of stress on the virtual memory translation system. So let's take a look at how the address translation system works in current systems. When a core issues a load, for example, to a virtual address, the access goes to a TLV. The TLV is supposed to have the translation from a virtual page number to a physical page number. It's possible that the TLV misses. In this case, the hardware initiates what's called the page walk, which is to fetch an entry from the page table. In this case, it will go to memory, grab the translation that it wants, bring it back into the TLV, and then the request from the processor is reissued again, this time hitting in the TLV, producing the actual physical address, and that goes to memory. Today, address translation systems are very complicated. This is the, uh, what we see in a x86 Redix page tables. Instead of having a single step of translation, the page tables are organized in a hierarchy with multiple levels of translation. Initially, we use a special register, CR3, to get the base of the first level of page tables. We add the base to the most significant nine bits of the virtual address. That gives us an entry in that first level page table, the PGD. We read this entry, and then we need to dereference that location because that location has a pointer to the base of the second level of pages. And now we add to that base, we add the next nine bits of the virtual address. We get the new entry, the PUD entry, and we, that's the base of the next level and so on. Only after four levels, we do the actual translation, virtual to physical, which is what we're gonna put in the TLV. Now, the way it works then is as follows. Whenever the core issues a load, the TLV misses, the TLV, the hardware, has to go to memory, grab the first level of the translation, bring it into the TLV, dereference it, and go to the memory to get the second level, bring it the second level, dereference it, then go to the third, and so on. You can see that this is a very costly process. As a result, designers have put L2 TLVs, which are much bigger, and they have even put MMU caches, which cache end-to-end -end translations so that if the program has locality, we only have to go to the MMU cache to get the full translation and the final entry to load into the TLV. You can see that this is a big problem. The problem is about to get worse because with non-volatile memory, we're gonna have very large main memories. And case in point, Intel with the Sunny Cove processors has introduced a fifth level of Redix page tables. That means not just four accesses, but five accesses to get to the final translation. It's clear that Redix page tables, which are used by all current processors, are not scalable. It is time to rethink virtual memory translation. The alternative to Redix page tables are global hash page tables. What's the idea of a global hashed page table? When the application issues a virtual page number, we hash it, and that's going to give us a position in a global hash table that contains the physical page number. This is the simple idea. In reality, there are many problems with this approach. The first one is collisions. 
Suppose that two virtual page numbers end up hashing in the same entry in the global hash table. That means that we need to have some sort of nodes hanging from this hash table and we need to resolve the collision, which is the physical page number that we want. One way to fix this problem, very expensive, is to invoke the OS and the OS resolves the collision. That's just one problem. What about two processes wanting to share the same physical page from two different virtual addresses, in this case, V1 and V6? The new application uses a different hash function, which may not point to the place we want. Instead, it's gonna to point to another place. And so what we're gonna to have to do is to have a new level of indirection. The new address is gonna to point to a, a location in another hash table, and then that's pointing to a second level of hashes. So you can see that this is becoming too complicated as well. And the same problem actually happens when you have to support multiple pages, for example, four kilobyte pages, two megabyte pages, and one gigabyte pages. How do we solve this problem? We have collisions, page sharing problems, page size problems. Well, we propose to rethink virtual memory translation from the ground up for parallelism, what we call elastic cuckoo page tables. To describe this design, I first need to discuss what a cuckoo hash table is. So what is cuckoo hashing? A cuckoo hashing organizes a hash table into multiple ways. For example, here we have a three-ary cuckoo hash table, and each way is accessed with a different hash function. For example, suppose that I want to find where P is in this three-way cuckoo hash table. I'm gonna hash P with the three different hashes and access the three different ways. And in this case, I find it in the first way. Most interesting is when do we insert an element? How do we insert an element with cuckoo hash? Well, we're gonna pick a random way of the hash table, use the corresponding hash function and map it here. Now, when we hash it, we find that it's already taken. So we need to evict the current value that's there and then put the new value. And then for the old value, we pick another way in the table and we rehash it. In this case, we pick three, way three, and B is there, so we evict B in the same way as a cuckoo bird evicts other birds from the nest, from their nests. So then we take B and we have to hash it with a, another way and eventually we find space. So with cuckoo hashing, we solve one problem at a cost, which is collisions. We don't have collisions because we keep evicting until we find the position. How about page sharing and different page sizes? Well, the solution is to have per process private page tables, per process private hash tables. So in this case, we have to be careful because if we give a page table to each process, they should not be too big. Otherwise, they will take the whole memory. Remember that in the case of Radix page tables that we have today, since it's hierarchical, we don't have the whole page table in memory at the time. Here, we would have to have the whole page table. So how do we work with this? Well, simple. We're gonna start with small page tables with few entries. And then as the application executes, we're gonna dynamically resize the page and possibly go up and also go down. And we want to do the rehashing without stopping the application. We want to do what's called gradual rehashing, which is while the program is running, rehash from one page table to another page table. And if necessary, reduce them as well. Here is how gradual rehashing of cuckoo hash tables works. For example, we started with the hash table on the left, which is a three-way, and it's getting filled so we decide to allocate a new cuckoo hash table for the same process that is, say, twice as big. In this case, what we can do is, as the program runs, every time we insert an entry in the hash tables, we rehash one element. For example, here, we rehash M from way T1 in the old table to the same way 
in the new table, T1 prime. This is fine. Unfortunately, the problem occurs when we do lookup during gradual rehashing. What happens when we want to find M while we are rehashing? Since we don't know if M has been moved or not, we have to have two times D lookups. D lookups in the old hash table and D lookups in the new hash table. And that's not good because we double the number of accesses. How do we solve this problem? We solve it with what we call rehashing pointers. Okay, so this is our contribution of how do you use rehashing, gradual rehashing, without stopping the application and with few accesses. We have a pointer, a rehashing pointer per way in each of the ways of the old table. And these pointers will be moved gradually as we rehash entries. For example, we start by rehashing the first entry of the first way, moving P1 down, right? The entry M is moved to the new table. We do the same thing for the other ways as we rehash entries. So for example, we move P1, P2, P3, rehashing the entries. What's left behind is what we call the migrated region. The migrated region is an empty space where no entry should be there. With the support, what happens when we want to look up an entry while we are rehashing. Very simple. We take the element, we hash it with the hash functions of the old table, and we compare the result to each of the rehashing pointers. If the result is an index that is lower than the rehashing pointer, we know that the value that we want cannot be there. It has moved already. So suppose in this case, that the hashes for H1 and H3 point to lower values than the rehashing pointers. In this case, we don't access these two ways. We only access way two, and then we access ways one and three from the new table. So clearly, in this case, we only need D lookups during resizing. And that is a good way of reducing the number of accesses. So with the support then, we have a way to have pages in memory. We don't have all these sequential accesses that Bradix accesses have. With a single access, we access the page table. We are able to have dynamic rehashing as the program runs. And while we're doing gradual rehashing, we only need D accesses as opposed to 2D. This is an example of a elastic cuckoo hash page table. If we have this environment, then we eliminate any sequential page walk, unlike Radix. At most, we have D accesses, and we leverage the multiple issue of multiple issue out of order processes. This is very important. Existing processes have the ability to issue multiple requests per cycle into memory, and current Redix page tables don't take advantage of this. Instead, they do a sequential access. In addition, with our design, we have multiple page sizes. We're gonna have different elastic cuckoo page tables, one per page size. In this case, we have a page table for four kilobytes, a page table for two megabytes, and a page table for one gigabyte. You can see that we can do all accesses in parallel. You may ask, this seems to be too many accesses actually in parallel. Don't you have problems with bandwidth? In reality, we have an MMU cache, similar to the MMU cache that exists in current processors. This MMU cache will build state over time and will be able to identify when, given a virtual page number, it's not say a four kilobyte page, or a one gigabyte page. Instead, it is a two megabyte page. Therefore, it's gonna be able to prune the accesses. And in this case, we will only be, need to access the one for two megabytes. In addition, the MMU cache may have information inside that says it's actually not in the first way or in the third way. Instead, it's in the second way. So with this support then, with this MMU cache that builds state over time, 
were able to cut down on the number of accesses. We have evaluated elastic cuckoo-page tables using simulations, and this is the speed-ups. In the x-axis, I have all the applications and the mean, so maybe we can focus on the mean on the right side. And for each of them, what we have is the speed-up over the first design, which is the conventional Radix design with only four kilobyte pages. This case is one, speed up of one. The second bar is also the Radix page tables, but huge sizes, not only just four kilobytes, but also huge pages. You can see that the gains are large. The third bar is using the Cuckoo design with only four kilobyte pages. And the final bar is the Cuckoo design with four kilobytes and huge page tables. So you can see that the new design, Cuckoo Page Tables, improve application performance over Radix by 3 to 28% with only 4 kilobyte pages, and from 3 to 18% with 4 kilobyte and huge pages. So it is a significant gain. So to summarize, the takeaway of this work is that we have designed elastic Cuckoo Page Tables, which is a scalable alternative to existing Radix page tables. It exploits parallelism in virtual translation for the first time, unlike, unlike Radix tables. It reduces the cost of hashing of hash table resizing. It improves the application performance of a Radix by 3 to 28% with only 4 kilobyte pages and 3 to 18% with both 4 kilobyte and huge pages. We expect even higher performance impact on virtualized environments where there are many, many Radix accesses. And currently, the current work is design a graceful migration from current Radix designs to Elastic Cuckoo. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello, um, I'm William Wang from ARM Research. Today, we are very happy to have Professor Joseph Polaris, uh, Professor of Computer Science of the University of uh, Illinois Urbana Champaign. Um, Professor Polaris is a fellow of IEEE, ACM, and uh, AAAS. Professor Joseph, um, main research interests are in computer architecture and uh, parallel computing. With, without further ado, let's uh, start with our Q&A. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Um, let me read out the first question here. What if there is low space left in the table with random approach to hash allocation? Would it not get stuck in infinite loop of cuckoo hat rehashing? Essentially, how is the problem of lowing if there is enough space somewhere on the page table solved? Okay, so we need to remember how cuckoo hashing works. So the idea is that whenever you have an insertion, you have this process called the cuckoo hashing insertion where you evict somebody or some other entry from one other way, push it into, then rehash it. And if that evicts some other um, entry, it's rehashed again, okay? So it's possible, it's possible. First, we try to avoid the problem of a very large number of a chain of evictions, okay? And how is this avoided? It's avoided by ensuring that the occupancy of the table never goes above a certain threshold. And if it's about to go over a certain threshold, then you resize. It's possible in a very uh, a pathological case that you would continue to have this conflict, chain of conflicts. If you reach a certain threshold, say 16, or a certain number of evictions, then you assume that you don't have space. And then you trigger a resizing of the, of the page. That's one approach. Another approach is simply to evict that entry and say basically that by evicting the entry, that entry is no more in the page table. Cool. Uh, let, let's move on to the second question. It's kind of related. Once you have dynamically increased the table size, 
in the cuckoo hashing, what happens to the old smaller table? All right, so if you remember, we're doing gradual hashing or gradual resizing, which means that while you are executing, you are moving from the small table to the bigger table, right? So at runtime, whenever you have both tables, as you insert one entry in the table, you also rehash an entry from the smaller to the bigger one. Eventually, the smaller one becomes empty and then you just recycle it. The space is recycled. So, so that's the idea. You, for a while, have two tables. So you start with small table. Whenever it gets filled to a certain level, you allocate a second bigger table and then you gradually move entries from the smaller to the bigger table. And when the smaller is empty, you evict it. And basically you, you, you re uh, recycle it. Yes, sir. Now, in addition to that, it's also possible to do the opposite. Basically, you have a certain hash table and you see that the occupancy is small. And so therefore what you do is you allocate a smaller table and then gradually you move stuff into the smaller table, okay? We call this downsizing and both things can happen at runtime. I hope this answers the question. Yeah, let's hope so. Um, the third question from Brandon, uh, Brandon Morin from ARM. What are the security implications of using this scheme can information about one process's page table be leaked to another process? So, so Brandon, there is, no, there is no additional security problems using this system than using the current Radix page tables. The reason is as follows, is that each process still has its own page tables. So by having the each process having its own page tables, then we ensure that there's no problem. There could be a problem if you had a single shared global page table, but as you saw in the talk, we don't do that. You can think of this as a, a replacement of existing page tables that simply takes advantage of parallelism in accessing the page tables. Getting rid of the old serial access that's going on these days of Radix page tables. Sounds good. Let's move it to the next question. With Radix page tables, the kernel can concurrently modify and, and or read page table entries. Each entry can be read from written to atomically would that be possible with the elastic cuckoo page tables? William, can you repeat the first part? It was not very clear. Sure. With Radix page tables, the kernel can concurrently modify and or read page table entries. And in the brackets, each entry can be read from written to atomically. Would that be possible? with the elastic cuckoo page tables? So the process is the same. So whatever you could do with the old ones, you could do it with this one. Um, there, is, there is no, 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 no difference in this, in this aspect. You know, I can get into more details and, and there, is more, there are more details in the paper, but at a high level, there is no difference in that. Yeah. The next question from Rocco um, from Arm as well. Assuming a clever ELAF TLB MMU cache holding ELAF lower level pointers and full translations so that you rarely need to perform a full page table work. Assuming in the brackets, assuming good locality and effective use of huge pages, the end of the brackets. Is there much practical benefit here? Are you assuming very large address spaces? 
So if you have good locality, of course, then any type of uh, caching and Redix page tables would work. Now, if we think about trends in current computing, um, we see that applications are getting bigger and bigger. And especially we think that because of non-volatile memory, the amount of mapping that you will have to keep is potentially much larger, right? So that's what motivates this problem. It's not something that I make up. Look at the way Intel, uh, the new Intel design. Intel now goes to five levels of translation. So there is here a problem. We didn't have in our evaluation any humongous working sets. We, we, you, can, you can look at the paper and, and uh, even with what we consider reasonable working sets, you have problems with sometimes some applications lack of locality. Just think about um, these GUPS. GUPS is, a, is an application from HPC that you probably know well that doesn't have a lot of good locality. So even with huge pages, you have problems with that. So you don't need to have, um, you, you, even if you don't have good locality, you, you, in cases where you don't have good look, perfectly good locality, Radix page tables have high overhead. Yeah, that makes sense. And our last question here, have you done any evaluations on a power slash efficiency impacts of this scheme compared to the existing hierarchical page tables? It seems that the additional hashing is a lot more computationally expensive. We have analyzed uh, the power consumption of, of this. We made some studies using cacti and academic type modeling of, of power and, and area. It is not that expensive to do CRCs. Um, this could take a couple of cycles, but in terms of power is not, not so much. Um, I don't think that it's a, it's, a, it's a significant problem. With Radix, the problem is, is the latency. So you serialize the translations and that takes time. As a result, the execution time of the application is higher and therefore you, cons you consume more power, more energy overall, consume more energy overall. So um, these two cycles that hashing takes is actually hidden in, we have a way of hiding this in the, in the process of translation. But in terms of energy consumption, I, I don't think that is, is a significant thing. Okay, that makes sense. So that's the end of list of questions so far. So I do actually have uh, questions as well. So I guess that uh, I can go to my, my question. Um, you mentioned about uh, kind of changing, the leader to change the uh, page translation um, with the advent of long volatile memories. However, so page tables are a concept that's only to survive beyond the determination of processes. So I also not over the power cycles where the long volatile memory is potentially providing this uh, capability of long volatility. So have you, have, ha, I guess, have you thought about extending, for example, this work to leverage uh, the long volatility aspect of long volatile memory rather than just uh, the capacity, the large capacity that uh, long volatile memory brings to a system? 
not uh, particularly. Um, we haven't thought about the implications of that. So um, whenever you have um, non-volatile memory, probably you have to move objects from DRAM to non-volatile memory during the execution of the program. So I guess one could try to optimize this thing. Uh, the, the, you don't want to have non-volatile objects all the time in non-volatile memory, because if you read and write very often, you may have problems with more latency. So some of the caching may occur in DRAM. Uh, but be beyond that, we haven't thought about this. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I guess, I think let's, let's give it a second or two if we don't have more questions coming up from Slido. Um, let's see. So, so one point I want to make, maybe that's interesting to some, some of the audience, is that whenever you go to virtualization, right, where you have a hypervisor and, and guests. So, so then the problem is compounded because you have some extra um, page table accesses, right? So that's an environment where this type of uh, uh, page tables will be even more important, right? Because instead of having 20 plus page table accesses, you can reduce it much more. Okay, and, and so what we are doing now is we're trying to understand how you can use these types of, of page tables for a nested environment. And how do you, how are you able to migrate gracefully from existing systems to a system that has um, this type of page tables? And, and you can think of that one approach clearly is that you could have the guest think that it is still using Radix page tables, but then the hypervisor itself uses the new types of tables. So applications will not basically notice anything and the system could run faster. That's a very good point. Um, I guess we, yeah, I think that we don't have any more new questions coming. So I guess uh, let's uh, wrap um, for the Q&A session. Thank you very much, Professor and Professor Joseph. And thanks to everyone for joining the session. And thanks for all the wonderful questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.